This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, an old Greek mummy tells us about the Renaissance. The University of Houston's College of Engineering presents this series about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. You've surely asked yourself, if I could go back and visit another age, which one would I choose? You may well have chosen the Renaissance, that glorious age of high culture and beauty. The Renaissance is tied to classical Greece through the old Greek idea that the world is shaped to its human occupants. That idea was far from early medieval thinking. Medieval interest in Greek literature had been growing since scholars rediscovered it around 1200. When printed books made that literature widely available after 1456, that interest turned into a passion. In the medieval world, female values had been strong. God wore the female face of the Virgin Mary. Then classical Greek ideas gained momentum. Greek women hadn't even been allowed at public meetings. Except for a few thinkers like Pythagoras and Plato, the principle of male dominance had been unquestioned. Now science writer John Noble Wilford tells about new work by archaeologist Joan Conley. She's been studying the 524-foot frieze from the Parthenon in Athens. It shows a formal procession. We'd thought that procession was part of a regular Athens festival, but Conley finds too much wrong with that idea. It would have been sacrilege to decorate a temple with current affairs. The penny finally dropped when Conley got her hands on some long-lost pages of a Euripides play, the papyrus pages were found wrapped around a mummy in 1962. The play tells the story of Queen Proxithea, who sacrificed her daughters to save Athens. Conley realized that same story had also been wrapped about the Parthenon as a centerpiece of Hellenic thinking. That frieze didn't represent a festival at all. It was a ceremony of human sacrifice. Just as boys went to war, girls went to sacrifice, all for the good of the city-state, Wilford reminds us. Greece was the cradle of modern Western culture, philosophy, even democracy. But Greece also practiced slavery, and it gave women no place at all. Late medieval scholars rediscovered those virtues and vices. They replaced the concept of corporate submission to God with the power of the individual. We call that shift the Renaissance. It gave us astonishing individual accomplishments. But almost subconsciously, we also took up the attitudes of an ancient age. Slavery had been dead in the Middle Ages. Now it came back, and so did witch burning. Archaeology is an odd business. A fragment of missing text turns up in a tomb. We start rethinking old virtues, and suddenly, in a blink, our view of the past has changed. I'm John Leanhardt at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work. <laughs> <laughs>